Uh, we, we were Echo for a second. Now we're not. Hello! Hello, everyone. I am Darby Hallman. This is Jeffrey Mayonnaise. I can hear you twice. Mm-hmm. You can, but they can't. Wait, yes, they can. See, this is the problem. This is how I normally test things, and it works when I'm in Elgato. It does not work when I'm here, because then everyone can hear my shit. All right, um, Jeff, tell the people both of the things that we're about to do today while I kind of um, test things on the really quick on the thing. First, we're going to be reacting to a couple things that happened today or launched today. First is the reveal trailer for Paper Mario, the Origami King. I've not seen it. Lost this morning. I've been trying to avoid it as much as I can. The most I really know is, well, origami's evolved in some way, I guess. And I was about to ask, does the name Origami King mean anything to you? Paper. There we go. <laughs> okay, so it's not, this has not been a man. No. Um, and, yeah, I know the release date and that's about it. Um, and speaking of that release date, we got a state of play focusing on a game with that same release date in Ghost of Tsushima. Just about busy. 19 minutes of goodness, hopefully. And we are also in the same video going to be reacting to both of those. I even for the thumbnail of this did a <laughs> cross between the two. Okay, those games are now linked. Yep. It's like Doom and Animal Crossing all over again. I saw Ian Heen from Easy Allies say, please people, do what Paper Mario gets you like you did with Doom and Animal Crossing. <laughs> please, 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 please. <laughs> so I, I'm expecting at least a couple um, Ghost of Tsushima or the gen and Paper Mario style, just that yes. paper and a cartoony style. I doubt it'll catch on quite as much as Doom as no. Animal Crossing because neither game will be nearly as big. But, well, I mean, Doom, you know, Ghost of Tsushima and Paper Mario might be bigger than Doom, but we'll see. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, you ready? I mean, yeah. any, any, any just la any last minute things to say? Like, you, you know, predictions or anything? I mean, it's kind of probably hard to. You, you expect this to be like in the style of the original. More so than More the last so, couple, like, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Which is what people have been hinting at for show. Alrighty. Here we go. Let me just make sure that it's playing. Look, the Unreal Engine 5. <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit, Peach, what happened? It's <laughs> so flat. How good to see you. Oh no. She joined a cult! <laughs> oh god! <laughs> Everyone's becoming. Wrong cool. answer, right answer. It matters not, your replies are all paper thin. Ha, get uh, it? Ha. Goodbye. Oh god, it's a horror game, Jeff. <laughs> oh shit. Oh shit, Bowser! An origami plot <laughs> <laughs> unfolds. Ooh, game look pretty. <laughs> it had like horror movie vibes straight up at the beginning. Nice. It's eating it. Meanwhile, I'm a bomb. I like the expression. Partners. Bomb. What? Is he the arms character? <laughs> it was like a Ooh, Bowser Jr. People pointed out the... Mm. We'll talk about it after. Yeah. Ooh. Huh? What's this? Oof. Driving the boat. Over an overworld. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Some crazy shit. That was a weird end, but... Nice. I mean, yeah. that is a crazy turnaround for the... <laughs> huh, there's something you don't see every day. <laughs> <laughs> he certainly looks at Is he battling something? Uh, this thing is on a Donkey Kong one on the side, too. Nice. I love the, like, the the writing definitely does seem like very not, like, normal Nintendo game writing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, what'd you think, Jeff? We'll, we'll Look neat. Mute that and let that play back through. 
See, the battle system looked interesting, like a weird wheel thing. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, it is like, I hope we, I hope we see a lot of this game in short succession because obviously it comes out in just two months. That's and crazy like, turnaround. I, that's fucking insane. Like, like, we, like we, we definitely, I, I knew this game was coming, but I didn't figure, I figured it'd be after summer at this point. Do you think, do you think that that is too short of a turnaround? Um, it depends how they market it from here on out. Because I feel like you have to market it a good bit in a short amount of time. Because like right now, this is a cool trailer, but in comparison to how close it is, I feel like I need to see more. Mm-hmm. It, as far as like the actual combat, mostly. Yeah, like the plot and the world and everything looks beautiful and awesome. And the, they even like hinted at how like the writing is very cheeky and funny and everything. Mm-hmm. Like I like that. I just. I still like watching this. I don't have a clear idea of the gameplay exactly. I mean, if I had played Paper Mario, maybe I would. Does it look kind of what you would expect from Paper Mario, like um, gameplay wise and everything else? Yeah, obviously, there's a lot of um, exploring going on yeah. in this and adventuring and all that kind of stuff, and only a little glimpse of the um, combat. Right. Which makes like it could be going in the more the vein of the last couple, generally speaking, and not just a straight um, RPG like the first couple games. So, like, was Paper Mario? Is it turn based in the old ones, or is it, yes? So it's like you go into a separate turn based battle screen. Yeah, and, and you have stats thing? and level ups and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, it kind of went away from that and the later games obviously yeah um, i don't necessarily get that vibe from the like the turn-based vibe but also we don't see enough it could still be mm-hmm. um out of curiosity people, uh people have pointed out i wanted to find it uh i think it's around here but it's looking like we got partners It kind of looks like a cast and some mini games. Look at that. Look at that town right there. That's pretty cool looking. Look at that. Yeah. That's pretty cool. I, I, I like love it. the lighting and stuff mm. in here. Like, That's a very beautiful game. <laughs> yeah. And this. One of the more than oh, yeah. That too. The like, um, overworld thing. Where was it? Where was it? Oh, well, there's the, like, when they were in the caves and stuff, there was, like, hieroglyphic stuff of, like, ancient um, toads yeah. that looked like a real human. Did you see this? Hold on. I, I gotta find this shit. It was, I, I just, it was here. No. Where the fuck was it? Maybe it was much earlier on. It must have been. Maybe not that bad. Yeah, I mean, it was not this early. But I like was. how Peach kind of like she joined a cult. Oh, he's and straight and, up. So, like, his so, origami, I guess, is, like, taking over people, obviously. Yeah, and, and it looks like, like the plot is going to be, um... Because you see Bowser all folded up, but I guess not completely origami. So, I guess you're working with him and his... Maybe your partners are, like, Bowser's minions, like Bowser Jr. See some Shy Guy bob and stuff yeah. on a Magic Koopa. So, really, like, Super Mario RPG vibes of, like, teaming yeah. up with Bowser, because... Yeah, I'm bam, bam. The well, part- yeah, you keep talking while I try to search for this stupid thing. <laughs> All right, right there. Look at it. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <Look at it. laughs> Someone on Twitter said, like, this is what toads used to look like, but after we domesticated them for generations, <laughs> like, what have we done to them? <laughs> and there, but there was this, and then there's also, like, an ancient tower or something. This was, like, the shrine to a toad. Like, there's toad lore, Jeff. Hell yeah, let's there's go. There's deep toad lore. <laughs> going on here look at yeah look at that back there oh, yeah. that, look at the toad tower right there toad lore Has- mm. <laughs> hashtag toad lore that's where we're going what does this mean for the mario timeline jeff what does it mean i don't know <laughs> i don't know so i'm very curious about the as far as the release date and the timing of the announcement because that's the one thing i've had to think about all day regarding this just the release date and the fact it was announced today 
I originally had the thought of, so why wasn't this the closer of the mini direct? Yeah. Um, but then I remembered the 3D Mario rumor where that was the 3D Mario collection rumor where that was supposed to be announced in May at at a little, at an event and Paper Mario was also supposed to be announced there. Mm. So this was the plan, you know, if supposedly if that rumor is true all along where this was supposed to not be announced in May with the quick turnaround. The only difference is it's not being announced alongside the the Mario yeah. collection stuff. I wonder if we're still getting that Mario collection stuff in May or if that's I can see them since they yeah. since they're now in rush and everything just kind of spreading it out. I, I, I bet you I bet you this morning Jeff Keeley's like, "Hey yo, what the fuck?" <laughs> I have summer of gaming. Why would you just drop this trailer randomly? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I could have done something. <laughs> I'm sure he's like you know, you didn't have to just randomly post it at like 6 a.m. You could have given it to your boy Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Um, yeah, I have mixed feelings because we talk about the quick turnaround thing being something cool and that we want for games and everything. And like for for me, it's cool. I worry that it is, and I, and I don't I don't know a hundred percent this. I I, like, I can see arguments either way, but I could see it hurting this game, which is having like you know. I don't think Paper Mario is like the most popular series, but just like everything else on the Switch, it could stand to jump up a lot in popularity. Yeah. Um, getting that Switch bump, I just worry that like mid May to July is just might not be enough time to like you know. So like a lot of things with um, Nintendo, word of mouth will be a big thing for it, and especially with this game. Nintendo has a dry thing, you know, doesn't really have many games going on right now. And obviously there's Animal Crossing. Next is Xenoblade, but that, that's a niche thing, no matter how you put it. This is the first thing that could potentially appeal to a wider audience. You know, not, not obviously the level of a lot of the other Mario stuff, but more than just G- um, RPG for, dorks. To appeal to a wider audience versus what? Now I'm sorry, I was doing things. I or compared to like Xenoblade. Oh, yeah. oh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what I'm getting at is Switch fans be hungry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's a gamble at least. Yeah. The the short of a turnaround is um. Mm-hmm. I don't know. You know, it's it, at least. I mean, I guess if if Paper Mario was going to come out, I mean, I think this release date is good for Paper. Obviously, the Ghost Tsushima same day as Ghost Tsushima kind of sucks, but overall, I think it's decent. You know, yeah. like okay, go to game explain. Like YouTube or Twitter? YouTube. Okay. We're not going to listen. I will go through and see everything Paper Mario stuff related later. But there are, there are two videos I saw in here which might be worth checking out here. Is it the bad? one on the right, it's 20 seconds, but it might be more gameplay. Yeah, I'll unmute this. Does this look like anything like the combat we've done before? You there were no is, circles. Do you think this is like a mini game thing or combat? No, I think that's combat. Interesting. Because it looked like you selected um, what you wanted to do, like between jumping and hammer, which is a typical typical Paper Mario thing. Um, oh, wait. Go back a couple seconds. Okay. It's like some uh, Tokyo Mirage sessions type things going on. Okay, see a time limit, and it looks like like you might have a certain amount of time. You can turn things to make them line up like that to do a combo. Hmm. I wonder if this is how like every combat encounter is. I imagine to a point. I imagine this is the main thing. Interesting. Wonder where this came from. And in the bottom right, I saw some buttons with character silhouettes at the beginning. Pause it. See down there. Yeah. You see the Mario um, Toad and whatever or- the origami person that's following you around. Apparently, a good guy. 
Yeah, um, I assumed that was the Origami King. Like, he was the bad guy, but I guess maybe not. I think they look different um, enough to, like... I think the King like, wore, wore a crown on the other one. Uh, They're probably related. Yeah. And it's probably information that everyone knows. <laughs> probably. The exact connection. And the B one seems to be Mario moves. Yeah. So, that so, might be the way partners are used in this. Because you see a bunch of... Um, different characters kind of following you around throughout the trailer so it makes you think okay they are going to join you in some way just may not be an exact battle partner like people were hoping or thinking um so it's definitely gonna be a new combat system 100 percent. and i'm not necessarily against it why i lo- like I, it'd be safer in my mind to go with the the old school way just doing this jrpg thing I'm not against them if long as it's fun doing them doing something different. Mm-hmm. As long as it's creative. I'm also curious if this is intelligence systems. Uh, yeah. But oh yeah. I just haven't seen it said said straight out. Yeah. It probably is. Because yeah. they didn't really have as much to do with Fire Emblem as as normal. So they had been working on something and Right. This is kinda as much as their baby as the um as Fire Emblem. Um and do the forty two new the, the one t- straight to the left of it. Because Luigi has a go-kart. I want to know what the fuck that's about. <laughs> what the hell's going on? Come on. Stealing game explains views. Oh yeah, sorry. Game explain. <laughs> Go watch game explain, people. Ah, uh, this is okay. So this is just screenshot. Little you invite to an origami festival because it's the beginning, and Luigi has a fucking go kart. Let's go. Yeah, just so anyone that's there, there is the title. Go. go yeah, watch yeah, got his cart, baby. Prepare to be folded. Ooh, this is pretty, Jeff. Yeah. This I'd like to see. Like, I mean, is this like? Is this is like the old art style, but obviously. Probably enhanced and <laughs> stuff. A lot of it is, yeah, just well, enhanced. That lighting is and hey. stuff in there is really cool. What a town. Freaking wall market in there. Yeah. <laughs> strand. Is, is this, this an extra strand game? game? <gasps> <gasps> Whoa. Shit. Man. Magic Koopa falling around. That's neat. So yeah, definitely. I mean, I don't know anything about the previous games, but you keep talking about partners. You definitely, obviously, have people yeah, following. Yeah, potential main complaint is the um, the it p- is Walmart. Here's the honey <laughs> yeah. the partners in the original games. <laughs> Fuck yeah, Here um, we were the regular enemy archetypes like the bombs and goombas and stuff, but they were their own unique characters with their own unique designs. They seem to be the generic look, looking like Magic Koopa and the bombs and stuff. Is that what it was like in the? later games yeah they just did more of the generic stuff and didn't do i mean there's like this bomb like there was that one scene where the bomb like had like a spatial expression like you were sitting yeah, there yeah, talking yeah. but like, like the design was completely different like the one of the ones was a p- um pink girl bomb with like a bow hmm. i mean so it seems like you might have some generic ones but it definitely seems like like that bomb definitely has a personality. Yeah, yeah i mean not personality just design wise there yeah they're normal Ta-da, how do I look? Yeah, I definitely kind of get like some Super Mario RPG vibes with the writing and stuff. Oh, yeah. The, again, the <laughs> ancient toads. It's like that used to be giant. I men. could have looked like that. <laughs> we must overthrow our masters. The lore. But, but going back to that, those stretchy arms. Paper Mario is the arms character. See? that's He's the arms character. He's the arms character. That's the twist. That's the twist. I'll be for it. I don't expect it. It's not going to happen, but... You know. <laughs> that is the twist. I'm really hoping Paper Mario... I'm, I guess depending on what the rest of the pack was. Who Paper Mario is and one of the Smash characters. So are you, you going to wait and let Ghost of Tsushima pr- um, prove itself to be the one you get that day? Are you going to let it have it say? Or is it pretty much already like throwing out the... But throwing we'll we'll the see. We'll see. <laughs> now I mean, I'll try to play both at once. Because <laughs> <laughs> this could be a good... Well, I'm definitely super interested. To, yeah. I mean, I imagine it will. I'll have no problem jumping into this without oh, yeah. no, having yeah. played the other ones or whatever. 
I mean, do the have do the other previous Paper Mario games do they like carry over to each other, or is it just like a blank slate every time? You probably get a couple of references here and there. I can't remember, um, cause, um, but I mean, not anything where it's like you have to play the games to understand the story. Because it's origami shit. It's new. Yeah, and it's just it'll just be the normal thing of oh Bowser has. I mean, not any more than Super Mario RPG. I imagine. Yeah. Right. Okay, if you want to, we can kind of stop this okay. here. Yeah, go go give Game Explain their clicks, please. And, you know, there's still a whole I'll bunch more. I'll give them more. some views later. A whole bunch more there, so um, definitely go do that. Jeff, any last things before we go into Ghost of Tsushima? I think it looks really good. I'm obviously curious about the battle system, but I'm a fan of everything else. Nice. Yep, I am also... I think it looks really cool. Nice. It looks really neat. I want to. I definitely want to know more what I'm doing minute to minute and mm-hmm. what the combat system specifically is. Well, well, at least from vibe and visuals and tone. Yeah. At least from the outside combat stuff, will look interesting. It'll be varied as far as locations and what exactly you're doing. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to make a note on my phone so that I can do timestamp. Timestamp. Nice. Um, so we have been doing this for 24 minutes. Nice. All right, Jeffrey, you ready for Ghost Tsushima? This is a little bit of a longer one. <laughs> yep. All right. Let's get it. Bling. What's the Ghost Tsushima noise? Ah. Bah. Lame. <laughs> you know, get, uh, no hints. Right. <laughs> no giving away shit. What if it was like a Sly Cooper noise? <laughs> oh, <laughs> Sly Cooper comes out there. Sly. <laughs> My boys. <laughs> Jason Connell from Sucker Punch Productions. Hi. We have a lot to show you today about Ghost of Tsushima. Combat. Tsushima. He said it different. Oh no. It's going to be controversial. Let's take a look at how you explore the world of Tsushima. No one's going to know how to actually say the damn thing. Exploring Tsushima. Ooh. Smoke. Exploration has been at the heart of our open world design since the very beginning. But you can't have exploration if you don't have curiosity. So we've continually asked ourselves, how can we let the island guide you in the most thematic and immersive ways possible? Guide me, island. Legend of the Ghost. Use the guiding wind to navigate the island. Wait, I can put that camera down so I'm out to change. Look at that cape flapping. Cape flap. So things. current chin. I wonder if the. Do we know if this is Decima Engine? I don't think they said. Might be wrong. I mean, I know this has been in development almost like since Horizon has, so it might not be. It's a pony. Definitely with the map and everything. Definitely very open world RPG. Yep. But setting is just very cool. Oh yeah, <laughs> I'm just gonna watch it here. <laughs> okay, so the wind acts as like a way. You're not gonna have thing. a mini map. You gotta use the wind to guide you. I, I'm down with that. I, I'm always down for um, RPGs finding ways to cut out the map, like for you to not use the map. I always love that. People were like, what's the HUD for Ghost of Tsushima? Apparently, 
there's not much I want to I love that. I mean, as yeah. long as the game does a good enough job of communicating yeah. things to you, I love that. I love minimal HUD. Hmm. And there's too many RPGs where you find yourself just staring at the mini-map the entire time. Yeah. I like how it's just the gallery thing. You didn't have to stop. You can just kind of do it on the way. Mongol territory. Okay. Again, very... Like Horizon of their RPGs. Can take you to all kinds of locations in the game. Like this farmstead that's been taken over by the Mongols. It can also take you to your next big story moments or even help you find rare collectibles. But what about the things that you don't know about, that you haven't seen yet, that you don't know exist? Keep your eyes peeled for other visual cues. Smokestacks on the horizons, interesting and odd shaped trees, or maybe even animals trying to get your attention. Quickly, no more. We gotta pay attention to the animals. Mm. Look at the, the muscles on that horse. It's a muscular boy. It's a bird. Some birds will lead Jin to the points of interest. Birds are a myth, Jeff. Oh, okay. Yeah, so they really are going into the, like, yeah. No hide, do it's it all about actually. fucking nature. Anyway, my lord, the spirits of vengeful samurai haunt this forest. Sounds good to me. Vengeful samurai. Let's go, Nobu. Ghosts. It's a fox. Fox and Fox will guide you into hidden <laughs> shrines. You are freaking on. Snow White. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Samurai Snow they White. They really like Jen. <laughs> Just love them. <laughs> this is our fox god. Yes. Gotta earn that minor charm slot. Minor charm. Yeah. You're not ready yeah. for mega charm yet. You'll be able to return where fast travel. Cowards. <laughs> Make me ride on my horse. Following a string of Tory gates that'll lead you to a high mountain shrine, or maybe it's just the fox trying to show you something hidden in the woods. You can pet the fox. Yeah. Oh no! You can squeeze through things. Seven out of ten. Yes, dead game. At most. Party. Lord Sakai. Respect. Press F. Okay. Respect. Flute guy? Yep, flute guy. You are the flute guy, Jeff. We've been the flute guy the whole time. Whoa. Hi, this is Nate Fox from Sucker Punch. Now, we just showed you some exploration. Andrew Let's Goldfarb gears, better be. Better talk to us in here. seen a samurai movie you know what to expect two warriors sizing each other up waiting for the other to make the first stand up Fight me. <laughs> Duel. it's time to do, 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 do. Just 
Mm-hmm. Killed some mofos. When the what the L one R one thing is. As you can see, the Mongols are everywhere on this island. For Jin to succeed, he has to use real skillful precision in fighting them. No wasted energy. Every strike must count. <laughs> Perry, what is this garbage? Perry in a samurai game? <laughs> it's looking like kind of more like slow, calculated combat rather than like kind of running. Shane's combat is like things. the most damage against specific enemy types. Okay, yeah. Almost more Dark Soulsy than just like you know straight up run in action. But yeah, at least there's a vibe on me. But I imagine you're still gonna be doing the RPG thing of like uh, taking. Oh, pay respects to the dead. Yes. yes. Jin the ghost. Like RuneScape, you get the bones, you, you bury hmm. them, and you get something. I don't remember. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I wonder if this is gonna focus on more stealthy stuff. So that was yeah. Jin fighting as a samurai, but now let's see him take on the same group of Mongols as the dishonorable ghost. Dishonorable. Mm. We have morality systems and justice. In infamous. Using fear. Yeah. Well, that's say I said injustice. Injustice. I meant to say infamous. It's like they they couldn't let it go. Yeah. Well, if your combat thing completely changes depending on how you go. Pretty cool. But what if I want to do both? <laughs> You're gonna be a lousy fighter, I guess. A samurai can't, um, like, put away his morals, Jeff. Maybe he can. Gotta use Kunai for a quick kill. <laughs> Gruesome. So yeah, it looks like you can kinda, and we'll see, I guess that maybe, yeah, it does look a morality system type thing. Be more of just a straight honorable samurai or a fucking ninja. <laughs> I'm down with that, yeah. I wonder if that's just like, you can use either of these combat styles and it doesn't really affect your morality or if it really is like, you know, if, if yeah. you, you can play it in two two routes and you're going to control yourself different in those two routes. And can you scrap and hook the climb? Okay. And he's not paying respects to any of the dead, Jeff. Mm. What a dishonorable man. He's playing honorable samurai, basically hard mode. Ooh, black bars. It's 
we read their redemption too now. Customized gin. But which dress will you get for Jen? Mm. I just imagine every game has its protagonist in the dress. Yeah. The samurai, or sneaking around as the ghost, Jin had on a different set of armor. That's because the armor in this game actually gives you different mechanical advantages. It's not just the way it looks. It helps accent your chosen play style. As you explore the world, you'll discover Omamori charms. They'll give you an edge in battle. But more importantly, as your legend grows, you'll develop all new techniques which transform Jin from a samurai into the ghost. But the thing is, you get to decide how those techniques evolve and grow over time. It's always worth keeping an eye out for dye flowers. Find enough of them and you can change the color of an armor. So not only do you get to choose how the ghost gameplay evolves, but you can fine tune the look as well. Hmm. Well, these environments <laughs> looks like it goes on for a long time. Photo mode. It wouldn't be a sucker punch game if it didn't have photo mode. It's true. <laughs> the Sly game, Cooper have photo mode. Field, so you can focus on the right objects. We have a bunch <laughs> There's of not sucker punch game. Really underline the motion. Darby, have they disowned them? About our game. You can control the wind's direction. That is cool. Speed, you can control the environmental stuff. Vehicles to different types of leaves and fireflies. You can even select a track of music from our original score that might be a little bit more fitting. So if you're into doing a photo, or maybe you actually want to do a video, there's something here for you. Here's a few that I've created. Sub or dub? In this case, Japanese is the sub. I mean, the dub. It's a perfect fit for our game. So I'm happy to say that before the first scene even starts, you'll be able to turn this option on. Yeah, might be one of the few games where, like, I mean, doing Japanese might be, like, kind of more immersive, but the only problem with games like this is, like, sometimes you want to hear call outs and yeah. stuff. Like, there's language, you don't want to be reading everything. Plus, for what I've seen, the um, lip sync goes with the English, not really the Japanese. Ah, yikes. Well, people talk about playing like Final Fantasy VII Remake with the Japanese audio. It's like, imagine walking through town and having to read every single NPC. That would be a fucking nightmare. Favorite samurai movie. You do the whole. created a windy, black and white, film grained out mode that you can turn on from the very beginning. You play black and white the whole time. Creator's intent, Jeff. That's how you meant to play it. Then it'd be on by default. Just make this a full on Samurai movie. That's funny. It's like washed out, too. <laughs> Bang. This would at least be cool to like put on for a little bit and then yeah. turn it. Hi, oh, maybe are you doing side missions and stuff? Today we've shared with you some of the unique ways that you can explore the island of Tsushima. Yeah. We've also shared with you some of the ways that you can fight as a samurai or assassinate yeah, the ghost. Done. Or customize Jin. I definitely think gameplay wise, there's nothing that like crazy about this. I mean, it's yeah. kind of, it, I mean, it looks polished and good. It looks like a good but version, but it looks like just another um, open world RPG or, you know, like Horizon type game like that. But I do think setting and visuals and score is pretty unique. Yeah. So. Yeah. 
Yeah, so it's uh, not a game that I necessarily expect to be like blown away by, but I think it's going to be a solid, mm-hmm. good experience. You know, what did you think? I think, yeah, I think it's going to get, um, for, as far as the gameplay goes, about pretty much what I expected. Yeah, me too. Um, but it, it, looks, didn't, it didn't really have something that was like gameplay wise. It's like, oh no, Darby, you're wrong. It's not just an, an over RB. You know, it, it, it has the customization, it has the like looting right. bandit camps. Ha- you know, everything in here is stuff we've done in a bunch of other games. Yeah. Um, they, they haven't shown or said anything before this that would make us think otherwise. No, and- no, no, no. But I mean, like, the, just the reason I say that is like going into this game, I've been talking about if I end up like brushing off of this game, it's going to be because of that. It's going to be because this is the type of game I've played the most in my life, hands down. Mm. So if if it does brush off me, it's probably because I just get to where it's like, all right, I've I've just done this type of stuff a lot, and it's not doing anything particularly new. I think that. Um, from what we've seen before and a little hints of the story obviously this, there was no story thing in here but the hints we've seen of the story I'm interested I'm interested in the kind of historical more historical setting of it and I, I mean I think obviously visuals and tone and everything is pretty unique it really yeah. does feel like a, a samurai movie or like you're in real ancient Japan I'm sure there's going to be some supernatural stuff but at least it seems like it's kind of more into man that. that'd be weird at this point considering Besides, kind of the that first trailer, but even now, what we've seen is more of just a cinematic effect than anything. Yeah. There's been absolutely no hint of it. Yeah, you can maybe argue this wind and animal stuff, but that could just them deciding to do it for the game. <laughs> I think that is a game. I mean, that, I think that's one of those immersion breaking things. The kind of uh, just like it's video games, you know. Yeah, um, but it's cooler and more interesting than just having the mini map, and that's. I agree. And that's how you find things. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, what do you think overall? Because you do not play as many of these games nope. as I do. I really can't think of many games like this you have played other than like Red Dead Redemption. I'm, I know there's some other ones, but like, what about, I mean, are, are you, do you think you're going to pick this game up? Probably, yeah. I, I think Why I definitely that? am. Um, I think a lot of it does have to do with Sucker Punch. Just I looked at it curiously because I was saying, I liked all their games since Sly. I looked, double check. It's like, yeah, I literally have played and loved all their games besides the first one they did it's, um, where they made an N64 game I've never heard of. Okay, I was about to say, but, I don't even know before Sly. <laughs> so, you know, it, they're one of the few studios I can, I can actually say that for. Right. If not the only one. Um, so... It's just I trust them that I'll at least enjoy the game a lot. Um, but is there something about the actual game that's attracting you more than like a Horizon, which you never picked up in some of these other ones? Um, I think the setting is is neat and all that. It's obviously a very beautiful game, and I don't know. Yeah, just something about the setting is the tone of it is kind of drawing me in more than these other ones. Than it, yeah, just being sucker punch. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah, definitely, like, video games are, you know, obviously, we're riddled with, we've gotten to the point where, like, fighting giant monsters, the robot dinosaurs and stuff is, you know, like, more outlandish stuff is kind of more the norm, and, like, having something that's a little more grounded like this is actually kind of the more rare thing and kind of more yeah. refreshing, you know. Um, and that's definitely part of why I loved, and I know that you loved Red Dead Redemption 2, was part, mm-hmm. partly because of the same reason, because it was kind of refreshing to be like, oh, I kind of really feel like I'm in, like, um, you, you know, like, early, or like, yeah, early, or late, West. Eight, late 1800s yeah. West, uh, it, you know, I feel like I'm really in well, New Orleans and places like this, and it's kind of... It's more, you know, grounded in a cool way. Mm-hmm. Um, and while we've had a lot of games, especially a lot of games recently with Japanese and Asian settings, I don't think we've really had some that quite exactly like this because they're usually like kind of more fantastical Asian settings like Dark Souls and stuff like that. Um, and uh, uh, freaking Sekiro. Neo. And Neo, yeah. This... I think it's kind of cool to see more of a, you know, yeah, mm-hmm. Red Dead like look to this, but not to say that it's not stylized. I mean, they're straight up going ham with the like sa- samurai 
flair to yeah. this especially when you do those like fights and everything and yeah being a fucking ninja it's cool because we've basically we've effectively seen the action movie turned into a game many many times mm-hmm. we have i haven't quite really seen like straight up we are like the makers of this game were obviously super duper fans of samurai movies yeah <laughs> obviously they watched a lot of samurai movies <laughs> while making this game that's pretty clear so yeah, so I'm definitely into it. Um, I, I expect to really like this game. I don't expect it to like jump up to my favorite games of all time or anything. I think it's going to, going to be really fun and have some really, really cool, um, unique aspects to it as far as the setting and uh, visuals and everything. Um, yeah. And not even the visuals. And like, I don't think this game looks better than a lot of other games I've played recently. It just looks different, like art style, mm-hmm. you know, what, what they made was. I still do, like, I'll be honest, after, like, watching the um, Unreal 5 thing yesterday and then watching this, I'm like, yeah, this does look kind of old. That, <laughs> like, and that's crazy because it looks beautiful, but, yeah, you know, we are starting to see the the PS4 be pushed to its limits for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I am interested. Totally interested. Um, not that far away? Nope. We got about two months for this and Paper Mario. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, Last of Us to the, um, this and Paper Mario. Got Xenoblade well, before be that. While, Dear Lord, yeah. it's going to be crazy. You're going to have completely beaten Xenoblade by the time all these games come out, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, full faith in you. Um. Well, all right. Any any last thoughts, Jeffrey? Um, I'm going back and forth whether I want to do the English or Japanese. The Japanese would feel right, but like you were saying, missing out on some of the more side things would suck. Something that also I one of the few things I actually saw related to this game um, before coming into this um, is the voice of Jin is the same in Japanese, the same guy who voices Zoro for One Piece. <laughs> uh, is that, <laughs> it's, the, 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 it's the samurai guy who has the three swords. That's fine. It's like, yeah. That's fine. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, maybe they've taken that into more of an account here. So maybe, like, they, they've they made it so it's not as bad of experience. Like, with anime, I love watching the Japanese version or whatever. Yeah. You're just watching a thing and reading it. With games, it's just a lot more thornier because, you know, sometimes you need audio call-outs and, like, battles and things like this. Like, I, I just take Final Fantasy VII as the, as the one that's closest on my mind and the one that, like, really, like... I would love to hear the audio track and everything, but think about like you're in the middle of a fight with someone and like there's a lot of dialogue in that game in the middle of fights. You're not going to be able to read that yeah. fucking thing while you're fighting and just walking around. You have to read like every NPC, especially if I like a remake because they all stack on top of each other. It's like that would be that would be bad. So it's, it's a lot harder in games because you're just asked to do a lot more. Um and your attention is more diverted so i would I, I will see what other people say if other people say it's not that bad i might try it but yeah um i'd say probably most likely i keep it english so i mean did i hear before they said the japanese option will be available at launch i remember there being like rumors before the japanese audio was going to be the default but i guess i don't think that's true because yeah, I'm pretty sure they said like it's gonna be available to you before you start the game. Yeah. yeah. So just like black and white. Just like black and white. Play the whole game in black and white. Yep. You can do it. <laughs> Options. If, if a fight's like so epic, I'm like, all right, Jeff, we're doing the black and white filter. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Cool beans. Cool yep. stuff. Cool stuff. Well, um, stay tuned to the Nerds at Large Gaming Podcast to post every Monday uh, where we will talk more about Ghost Tsushima as we see things, even though I'm, I imagine this is going to be one of the last big um, dives. And I'm, I'm sure there'll be another like, launch trailer and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But, um, uh, and then whenever we do get our hands on this, we will talk about it in July. July 17th. Isn't that mm-hmm. right? 17th? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yep, exciting stuff. And then also in this video is Paper Mario, the same damn day. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> it's really, really funny that these games were both shown like the same yeah. day and they just happened to be. I wonder if Nintendo's like, damn, or like. Yeah. I don't know. Interesting. 
All right, well, we are going to um, go stream Super Mario RPG, uh, continue our stream of that. I'm going to put down this stream for a moment, and then we'll come back up and be good to go. So go check out that series. It's on YouTube. You can catch up on all the episodes. Um, that game's turning out really good, and especially with Paper Mario now coming out, it's like even, you know, Paper Mario's kind of spirit, spiritual successor to this game, so yep. even more relevant. So. Catch up on it with us. Where the fuck is Gino's Paper Mario? Where is it? You cowards. All right. Peace.